<laughs> What's going on, guys? It's been a while. It's been a long time. But that was one of the greatest football Sundays that we have ever experienced as a nation. It was absolutely spectacular. All of the pain of the Giants' loss has been showered on by the great 49er victory in a play just like Kevin Dyson, Jabari Owens, one of the greatest games I've ever seen in the regular season, Russell Wilson, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. What he did in that pocket to extend plays, it was an all-time goal line stand. That delay a game, all the memories of that Super Bowl came rushing back about Marshawn Lynch, Daryl Bevel running the ball, and Jacob Hollister. Jacob Hollister. Jacob Hollister. That play was like Kevin Dyson in the 1996 Super Bowl. In the 1996 Super Bowl, the Tennessee Titans were within one touchdown. And I will talk a lot about Freddie. In 1996, the Titans were within one yard of tying it up against the, 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 uh, the Rams. And that's exactly what that play was like. It was an epic stop. I think Fred Warner and another guy were in on that tackle. It was one of the most epic plays. I will say this. Um, I am rooting for the Niners to win. I thought Jimmy G played well tonight. He missed a couple of throws to Sanders and the shovel pass. But overall, the offense rolled. And then Russell Wilson just made plays. And he nickel and dimed the 49ers down the field. And he was a magician. I thought the 49ers pressure was there. I thought the guys played well. I just think DK Metcalf is a complete beast. And Russell Wilson's an all-time quarterback. The ultimate magician. And um, it might have been Dre Greenlaw making that final play from Arkansas. But that was the biggest goal line stand. And I will have to say this. You guys know that I like the Niners. You guys know that the Niners rep the channel. Um, that should have been a pass interference. And it should have at least been reviewed. I mean, after the Saints thing last year, I can admit that Fred Warner was all draped around that tight end over there. And I can admit, I can admit that that could have been a pass interference and it should have been a pass interference because he was gripping him, he was squeezing him, he was holding him. So then the ball would have been on the one yard line. It would have been a different game. That game came down to the end of the game, 50-50 chance. That fourth down was so clutched by Russell Wilson getting that first down. And the 49ers didn't have answers in the second half for when Russell would improvise. And that guy, Travis Homer, played an outstanding game. I thought that um, Debo Samuel was spectacular tonight. Jimmy G continues to gain more confidence. George Kittle. The second half, the, the Seahawks just held the ball the entire time. And there are some holes in this 49ers secondary that are definitely worrisome. I mean, I think it was Witherspoon. I could tell you that slot cornerback, um, it might have been Quan Williams. He was getting beat by in the slot. Um, but... It was uh, it was it was spectacular and yeah it was a hell of a game and Raheem, Raheem Moster coming in as a preseason guy and now the 49ers win and the 49ers had their chance to win that game they nearly got that third and seventeen play, third and seventeen uh, play and now the 49ers the road goes for San Francisco and this is a Seahawks team that also this is a Seattle Seahawks team that also lost to Arizona. It's been teetering on disaster all year. The 49ers have been the most consistent team. They've had the hardest schedule by far in the NFL, going to New Orleans, hosting the Green Bay Packers, playing against Atlanta. I know it's Atlanta. Um, the 49ers, too. They went Green Bay at Ravens at New Orleans nonstop. They beat the Saints in a classic way. And... Um, it was it, tonight's game lived up to the hype. Wilson is one of the best quarterbacks ever in the history of the NFL. But Jimmy Garoppolo, Kyle Shanahan, seeing John Lynch on the field, all that is worth Solomon Thomas pick. Um, you know, you look at the 
at, at the pick of, um, you know, Tavarius Moore, the Debo Samuel pick, the Emmanuel Sanders trade, Kyle Juszczyk and George Kittle. This is a legendary team with, with Jimmy G. It's been the best team all year. The win against Green Bay, the wins against the, the uh, Cleveland Browns, um, sweeping the L.A. Rams. And uh, I think I believe that they go five and one in their division. They beat Arizona in epic ways. They win offensively. They win defensively. And um, I think that the defense and Rico, when you get when the Niners get that game, when the Niners get the Eagles coming in, or when the Niners, ironically, the Niners are going to play Seattle in Santa Clara probably, and that is going to be a, a, a World War Three. But I think that the Niners now, with the home crowd in Santa Clara, I believe that the Niners are going to roll to the, to the Super Bowl. And they're probably going to play against Kansas City in the Super Bowl. So that leads me to the big storyline of today. And I know that you guys want to hop on in here. We got a lot of Giants fans. John, how you doing, man? Thank you so much for being in the house. Bob Money And Jimmy G is a winner. And he was accurate. And he hit George Kittle. He hit Debo Samuel. He makes all those slant passes. And he was impeccable tonight. O. Campbell from Texas. Or O. Campbell TX. Tennessee Titans Patriots game. So there's so much to talk about right now. Let's talk about one of the craziest upsets first of the day. Ryan freaking Fitzpatrick beating the Patriots. That was an absolutely amazing game by Fitzpatrick. You all thought the interception was coming. You thought Fitzy would choke. You thought the Patriots. You thought the Patriots would go down. You thought the Patriots. No, you thought the Patriots would find a way to just beat the Dolphins and it would be ugly. Never in a million billion years would I think that Ryan Fitzpatrick of all people would go in the Foxborough in a game that the Patriots need. And I just thought the Patriots were going to get a stop late. And um, and it didn't happen. Ryan Fitzpatrick, the Patriots now, their chances are pretty much the Super Bowl. The dynasty of Tom Brady pretty much might have ended today with Tom Brady. So that was an amazing uh, that was an amazing game. Bob Money, Jameis Winston, Ferdy and Ferdy Club. Um, great two questions right there. Historic. Incredibly, impeccably, and amazing. Jameis Winston, one of the great quarterbacks ever. America was watching, and he delivers in an incredible way. He throws that balloon ball up in the sky, and he gives out gifts. He's the Santa Claus of the NFL. The most exciting player in the NFL is Jameis Winston. He can win a game, and he can lose a game. Every snap is must-see. It's touchdown or it's pick. It's no in-between. It's black and white every snap single play. F Freddie Kitchens is fired. Mike McCarthy to Cleveland. I want to see happen. I want to see Mike McCarthy's rigidness with an Odell with a Baker Mayfield. I want to see him kick ass in Cleveland, be a disciplinarian for the Cleveland Browns and see them stick with a guy in Mike McCarthy that has won Super Bowl championships. I don't want Urban Meyer for the New York Giants. I want Matt Rule because there's no way that Urban Meyer is excellent with scheme. I don't think he, I think he's a really good recruiter. I think that his offense is a little bit outdated. And guess what? Urban Meyer's defense. I mean, I agree, Mitch. I want Isaiah Simmons as well in the draft. I want Isaiah Simmons because that's a great linebacker. I completely agree with you 1,000%. You need him around the football. Or Chase on from LSU, but Simmons is the pick. But the thing is about Urban Meyer is that his defense sucked at Ohio State. He has health problems, and the Giants' defense will continue to suck. you got to get a guy like Matt Rule. 49ers 13 and 3. It's been a dream season. Uh, Richard Sherman's been excellent. The leadership of George Kittle on this team, Raheem Moster, Kyle Shanahan, one of the best coaches of the year. And um, it wasn't a lucky game. Tonight was a 50 50 game. The Niners up 13 to 0. If, if Jimmy Garoppolo hit that little shovel pass, or if he hit Sanders in stride, it could have been 17 to nothing. You got to give Russell Wilson a lot of credit for coming back. Uh, and the 49ers going up to Seattle. They haven't won there in nine years. It's absolutely unbelievable. I think that, that, that uh, Justin, if the, if the Giants can get Isaiah Simmons in that spot, you have Epinoza in that spot. 
I like that. And I know you're an urban guy, but I'm more, I'm feeling more Matt Rule, Lincoln Riley. Um, Debo Samuel is absolutely impeccable. Debo Samuel's amazing. I believe Shermer's going to get fired. Um, I want to see if Gettleman stays. I've liked what Gettleman has done. And by the way, today, by the way, today, um, Leonard Williams played a really good game today. You have this guy, Caden Smith, who's coming on really well. You have Daniel Jones stepping up, making some good throws over the field. Saquon Barkley, this is a good young nucleus. I'm still going Patriots. I'm still going Patriots um, in that game versus the Tennessee Titans. But with the Patriots losing to, with the Patriots losing to the um, Miami Dolphins, anything is possible, but I'm still going with the Patriots. Alex, how are you? Jason Garrett doesn't need to get fired. There's 0% chance they're renewing his contract. He is absolutely 1,000% toast. I think Lincoln Riley would be a home run hire for the Cowboys, and I don't want it to happen. Um, I hope that the Tennessee Titans upset the, upset the Patriots. It would end the dynasty. A.J. Brown is so, so damn good. I mean, and Ryan Tannehill is exactly what that offense needed. It was a little dicey there with A.J. McCarron early on in that game. Congratulations to you, Tennessee, for outlasting and surviving. And guess what? The Titans have had a tough schedule, and they've really dealt with the second half in an incredible, incredible way. Um, Derrick Henry's going to have to run it down the Patriots' throats, but I'm just concerned about Mike Vrabel going up there. I'm concerned about Tannehill, and it's still the New England Patriots. Alex, I actually think the Eagles can go on a late run. I hate the Philadelphia Eagles, but Carson Wentz is magic. Their team just plugs and plays guys like Boston Scott, and um, – I'm nervous. I hope this. I hope the Seahawks actually beat Philadelphia for sure. I want to see a rematch, and I'm really happy that it's going to be Russell Wilson going to try to beat Philly. That's a 50-50 game for me. I just want Seattle to win that, but the but the Eagles. I'm never counting them out of a game. They're an they're an incredible team. Really, really well coached. I, Manny, I absolutely think that the Oakland Raiders are going to draft a quarterback next year. There's no doubt about it. But they're not going to tell you Derek Carr is still on that contract. Why do you think Seattle's so banged up? They're so emotionally taxed out. They just lost to Arizona. The Eagles are humming. It's a home game. Um, man, oh man. I like what the Broncos are doing. I didn't watch a ton of the game today. Big travel day, getting in, watching, you know, trying to watch a lot of uh, football as I could. But I, I couldn't see that Broncos game. I'm going to do some Drew Locke film reviews, though. I'm so excited about Locke going 3-1. and one. You got to want Seattle back there. You don't want to see Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson. The Chicago Bears still fought. The Chicago Bears still thought that it was a good idea to play Doug Peterson and the Eagles. How did that turn out for the Chicago Bears? It didn't turn out awful at all. Spotlight Sports, how you doing, man? Great hearing from you here um, in the chat. It wasn't that tough of a loss because even the Jaguars won today. Even the Titans rolled. And um, I know you probably hate the Denver Broncos, but this season for the Oakland Raiders, um, it was a really exciting year. And you got to the end of the year. You don't have a lot of talent on the defensive side of the football. And you're going to get a lot of talent. You're going to get a lot of talent on the defensive side of the football uh, in the upcoming draft. You might get a Justin Herbert or a Jacob Eason. You're going to be looking for a quarterback maybe as well. You need a stud wide receiver. This is just the beginning. You have Josh Jacobs coming back. You have the Mississippi State kid who I really like. Abrams coming back. And uh, Mad Max Crosby was phenomenal. And you're absolutely going to get it. Uh, some, good, some good players. Um, G-Men 409. I think Shermer is out. I do. 4-12, and 12, just unacceptable. Uh, 49ers playoff chances. Chris Senor, how you doing? 49ers playoff chances. Um, I love I love the Niners now to go and win the Super Bowl, and I've been calling it from the whole year. The NFC, I got correct. I said in the AFC it would be the Denver Broncos, actually. Everybody stand up for entertainer talking sports. Andy Garcia, congratulations, man. Or what's going on? 
Um, you're a Giants guy. Uh, that was a tough, 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 tough Giants game, man. I thought we had them in the third quarter. I'm going to talk about the Giants Eagles for a second. I thought, I thought we had, I thought we had the Eagles. That fourth and that we had second and one. Daniel Jones run running the ball. Second and one. It was ten to ten. We were feeling pretty good there. Ten to ten, feeling good. Then we decide to run a play to Saquon Barkley. He gets stuffed. Then they try a long throw to Sterling Shepard. Didn't work. Fourth and five. I liked Shermer going for it. Horrible incomplete pass. But that second and one, two consecutive drives on second and one. The Giants had the football. And on second and one, they can't even, they can't even run the damn ball. They can't even run the football. Um... It, it, and it was awful. And then, you know what happened? The Giants lost that game too. Third and 10, Carson Wentz dropped back, lobs the ball up, right sideline. Eagle guy makes an outstanding catch on the football, man. Um, I can't wait for Seattle, uh, uh, Seattle 49ers 3. I think Seattle is worthy of beating Philly, but... Um, I think Philly's a, Philly's a dangerous out. Don't count out Doug Peterson. Don't count out Doug Peterson whatsoever. Freddie, Kin Freddie Kitchens ends up getting fired. Freddie Kin Kitchens ends up getting fired. I'm going to go 49ers Chiefs for my Super Bowl prediction. 49ers Chiefs and Buffalo can maybe make a late run in there. Um, I'm taking the Chiefs to the Super Bowl, but the Niners beat the Chiefs. The Niners, the Niners, NFC West Championships, NFC West Champions, 13 and 3, one of the best teams ever. One of the best teams ever. I want to take Buffalo. I want to take Buffalo over the Ravens. Absolutely. Thank you so much, MH, for the compliments on the shave. But I am going to shave even more. It's just the start of a new year and a new season. I think the Eagles, uh, I'm so, t uh, whatever I could do to get the, the Seahawks to win, I'll do at this point. Uh, but I got Bills over the Texans, and uh, this Bills team is going to win for sure. Uh, and I'm taking 49ers and Chiefs. The Patriots are done. I don't think that they're going to get through our uh, head stadium. One of the worst losses in their franchise history was today against Ryan Fitzpatrick, a team that the Giants defeated so badly. That drive by Fitzpatrick defied his whole career. Everybody said, everybody said, everybody said that, uh, that the Patriots were going to get the bye and it was absolutely crazy. But I'll take, I'm not taking the Ravens. I'm going to go with a little Bills Chiefs in the title game. Yes, I am not taking the Ravens. I've doubted them all year. They've shut me up all season long. And they're probably going to do it again, again. But the 49ers, this was one of the great wins. That pass interference call was absolutely a blown call. Um, and it's going to get overshadowed by that ending. Um, the Ravens are going to be the popular choice, Ravens 49ers, but I really want to see Buffalo get by the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Lamar Jackson is the MVP. It's only a debate about how good he's going to be long term. I didn't think this style could translate to the NFL. This system and what he's doing, he's one of the greatest playmakers we've ever seen. No one I, I, I don't understand how you could predict Lamar Jackson running the ball like this at the NFL level. He wasn't even quarterbacking like this at Louisville. I don't understand how anyone could have predicted this type of offense being successful. This is just one of the craziest offenses in the history of football. I don't get how anybody could have predicted this because he's not even doing it throwing it. He's doing it running it. He's doing it everywhere. Um, but yeah, hold on. But yeah, I didn't I thought the 49ers were the better team tonight in the first half. They came out and gunned them. And, uh, when you get off to a 13, nothing lead like they did, I just thought the 49ers really had, had the game. And, um, I think the 49ers in Santa Clara with Bosa, with that pass rush, they are going to absolutely 
Absolutely. I think the 49ers with the pass rush at home, I think the 49ers are going to walk to the Super Bowl. They're going to find ways. Whoever they find, whoever they play, the 49ers are going to end up beating that team. Can you just pass me the charger, please? Yes. David Neal, how you doing, man? I believe that you are a Broncos fan. Drew Locke's 3-1 and one as a starting quarterback. Drew Locke. He's going to have a fine, fine NFL career. I think 49ers were my pick to win the Super Bowl. That is correct. I think I was 49ers in Denver. I thought that Joe Flacco would go back to the Super Bowl. Um, but that didn't work out. Could be Denver coming up soon. It wasn't that bad of a penalty. David Neal, thank you so much for the super chat. Drew Locke is the truth. Drew Locke and 3-1 uh, and one is the starting quarterback. Exciting times for the Denver Broncos. L, foul player. Who are the Giants going to take at number four? Isaiah Simmons from Clemson is absolutely what we need. He's a guy that is a do-everything linebacker. He plays coverage like a safety. He runs like a linebacker. He is a next-level defensive playmaker and Isaiah Simmons is a leader he's a winner and he's absolutely everything that I want in a player I think that this tackle class is so deep this tackle class is so deep that we wait on a tackle it is Isaiah Simmons from Clemson he can run he can get to the quarterback and I'm telling you, he can guard any tight end. You're not going to have Zach Ertz streaming down the field. You're not going to have Terry McLaurin going right down the slot. Isaiah Simmons, every single play in the tackle class is deep. You have Worfs. Alabama has two tight end, uh, two uh, tackles that are really good. The Iowa tight end is just as good as the freaking Georgia tight end, Worfs. So, I mean, come on. <laughs> I don't know if he can cover George Kittle. If you aren't in the 4-3, if you are in a 4-3, he'll play the Mike or he'll play the, the or he'll play a weak side linebacker. So there's so many good, good offensive tackles in this draft that you shouldn't just take Andrew Thomas. I don't want to just do that, okay? I don't care. I don't care about another tackle. This team needs defense and it needs covering skills, and Isaiah Simmons accomplishes everything. And he's a new school player. He's a fast linebacker. We haven't drafted a linebacker in such a long time. Um, we're not trading down either. No, I, I don't think so. Well, let's just take Simmons right there at number four. He's a top five talent, and the kid is a great kid. And I, I want to take him. I'm leaning that. Um, if the Giants take Epinoza, who's kind of a classic 4-3, um, that's another option, right? I just We need our defense to be studly, studly. Absolutely. Defense is number one. We go tackle. Uh, in, in, we do tackling next because we've been all about offense. All about offense. Absolutely. D Ford. <laughs> D Ford is coming back. Um, D Ford is coming back. The 49ers are absolutely going to win. The 49ers are going to win. Uh, this, this, I don't see any team. Be, I think Seattle's the toughest matchup, but against Drew Brees, they're going to get to Brees. You already saw the Packers. You already saw the Packers play against the 49ers. So, um, yeah. Akuda is fine. <laughs> you know, it might just be because of Eli Apple, but, you know, with the Giants and cornerbacks, it's just they have a lot of, they have a lot of cornerbacks like Ballantyne, Sam Beal. I thought Hamilton actually battled today. I really liked what I saw from him. Um, but the Giants have so many corners. I don't want to go back to the well on the corners whatsoever. He, Okuda's a damn good player, though. Uh, by all accounts, he's athletic. He's lanky, right? And uh, But again, uh, maybe he's soft and the other guy is a good cornerback. Um, Titans and Patriots. Getting a lot of good questions about that game. It's going to come down to Derrick Henry. Can, can Derrick Henry run the football? Can Derrick Henry run the football in New England? Can the, can the Titans get a pass rush on Tom Brady? The Titans' defense is so spotty. 
Um, Dave Gettleman has overcome cancer. Um, Big Blue for life. He has overcome cancer. So I don't know about his health status. I really like the Leonard Williams acquisition. I said today when Big Cat made that sack on Carson Wentz and that play action fake, I said, sign the guy. Sign him to a bunch of money, $16, $17 million. Sign the guy. I think Leonard Williams is worth that kind of cachet. I love Leonard Williams. I love what uh, what he's done. I really do. Um, and, and I think that he adds a lot to the defensive line, Dexter Lawrence. I like a lot of what Gettleman has done, okay? The offensive line didn't play great today. I understand that, but you have Caden Smith, you have Slayton. Golden Tate was out there making plays. Uh, ten all, the Giants had an opportunity. That fumble killed them. A lot of third and ten conversions killed them. The Giants just withered in the fourth quarter. It shouldn't have been like that. And the Giants have withered throughout their time, but I think Gettleman's put us in a wonderful, wonderful spot, a wonderful spot to be really, really successful. Um, the Saints are going to win. The Saints are going to win. So let's let's do a little bit of playoff picks right now. So my dad doesn't have a shirt on here, uh, so he's going to be in the in the background of looking a little bit like a caveman at this time of day. Um, <laughs> like yeah. So make sure you're not in view, uh, but. Uh, yeah, he'll be all right. Uh, you, all right. Got you got him. You got him. You got him. You got him. That's life. That's life when you're streaming. Got people living here, and uh, I'm still living at home. Hey. <laughs> still living here. I'll be living here till I'm 50 years old, eating soft pretzels and cooking up some pizza bagels and a little mini hot dog. I'm going to be right here. I ain't getting my own house. I'm going to be right here with my dad, and he's going to be looking 70, 80 years old. He'll be walking around like a crazy, crazy guy. Um, but anyway, of course, that could get you off track. There's no doubt about it, of course, and especially when people are talking. Um, hold on. I'm talking. Talk. Shh. I'm going to take. I'm going to take next week. First game, I'm taking the Bills at the Texans. First game, Bills at Texans. I'm taking the Buffalo Bills. It's one of my big picks. I think it's going to be similar. It's going to be similar to last year down in Houston, Texas. Late at night, it's going to be Saints and Vikings. Kirk Cousins isn't going to have enough for Drew Brees and that Saints team. Saints are going to be favored by about seven or eight. They're going to cover. I don't think Dalvin Cook's going to come back. I just think the Saints are playing amazing football right now. They are really hot. Played well versus Panthers. Played really well, I think, a week ago. They are playing absolutely tremendous. Uh, then I'm going to go with... Um, then on Sunday. Sunday, we have two more games of football. We have the Seattle Seahawks Eagles. I think that that's going to be put on Sunday. I have no idea about the times. Um, I think Seattle can win that game. But again, hate the Eagles so much. They, they, they just will never die. That's not a game I'm very confident on. But I'm also going to go with the Patriots. I'm feeling that the Patriots are going to beat Tennessee. Tennessee's defense is not good. Mike Vrabel in a big spot. Tannehill and Vrabel don't trust them. Why isn't there a chance at Matt Rule? Matt Rule is big blue for life. Matt Rule is, is, is actually going to Charlotte, I believe, to interview with Carolina. Matt Rule's dream job is the Giants. So you know what? So you know what will happen? This is what will happen. <laughs> I'm just so just pissed off at the Eagles winning games. I don't know if I have the, the uh, energy to do that type of video, Chris. But, uh, but, but, um, Matt Rule, I, first of all, if Matt, I, I did hear that. I heard that Matt Rule might not want to work with Gettleman. As much as I like Dave Gettleman and, and the path that he's led the Giants on, Matt Rule is such a special coach that if that's the case, you have to part ways with Dave Gettleman. If you get a guy in Matt Rule that changed Temple, that changed Baylor, Matt Rule can be the messiah of Giants football. He can be one of the greatest coaches the Giants have ever had. He's a Super Bowl championship coach, in my opinion. He is the shining star, the clear-cut number one choice. If that results in Gettleman getting canned, 
You absolutely do it. Even though I do like Gettleman, you hand the keys, you hand your whole car over to Matt Rule, and see you later, Dave Gettleman. Now, if Matt Rule's not in the picture, then things are going to get pretty wild. Then you're going to have Lincoln Riley. I'm not a fan of Mike McCarthy, actually, at all. I'm not a fan of Urban Meyer. I think that Mike McCarthy doesn't get along with, with this young generation of players. Uh, and trust me, trust me, trust me. Um, look what happened when Green Bay fired McCarthy, right? This is why I want him to go to Cleveland so bad and kick Baker Mayfield's ass and kick Odell's ass and Jarvis Landry. It's because what happened when this 38-year-old, you know, guy from the freaking Titans, Matt LaFleur, came into Green Bay? What happened when he came into Green Bay? You fought. You know what you guys fought? You fought that LaFleur would be Aaron Rodgers' little puppet, and you fought Mike Patina and LaFleur wouldn't do shit. And guess what happened? They only just they only just went 12 and 4, right? So Matt Rule is clear cut. He's from New York. He has great defensive integrity. He can get the Giants playing solid defense, and he's a CEO, and he understands everything about the roster. He's a competitive son of a gun. He's really competitive. He has perfect temperament. It's absolutely, absolutely Matt Rule is the number one choice. I think you guys have reported it probably on YouTube. For some reason, maybe it's because of Chase Young, for some reason, and you got to give Washington credit here, they've made a couple of good moves. One, Washington got rid of Bruce Allen, who's really shitty at drafting players, who sucked for a long time. Riverboat Ron is likely gonna is likely gonna port in Washington, DC. So Riverboat freaking Ron deciding that he wants to go to the Washington Redskins. Maybe it's because he spent time in the South, maybe it's because of the expectation. He wants to park the boat. In the, uh, in the freaking Washington River, whatever's up there. What the hell does Riverboat Ron want to do with Dwayne Haskins up there? What does he want to do with Darius Geis? He's out there playing video games. Well, he's out there playing video games. He, he gets drafted in the first round because he's a weird dude. What does, why does Riverboat Ron, why does Riverboat Ron want to go through the Redskins? Why? <laughs> why? Why there? Why? Chuck Shorts, he hang out with you? Chucky? Chucky, what's he doing? What's in D.C.? Is he going to have some crab legs up in D.C.? I mean, come on, you know? I thought he has a wife. Is he going to bang all the young college girls at GW? What's he doing? Riverboat Ron. Riverboat Ron going to try to get some hot chicks in the freaking Washington, D.C. suburbs. Why? You want to hang out with Dwayne Haskins, no wide receivers, and have Daniel Snyder and play in a stadium where the walls are falling off? You go up in that press box, you'll feel like it's 1960. You go up in that press box, they show black and white copies of the game. Okay? They haven't even heard of an iPhone. They still operate on Envy's and Razors up there. Who wants to go to the Washington Redskins but Chucky? You guys are going to get a good coach. The Washington Redskins, no expectations, but it's looking like Riverboat Ron's going to go there. Cleveland Browns, McCarthy is perfect. He's a discipline, disciplinarian. I don't love McCarthy at all, but, I, but the Cleveland Browns, they've just annoyed me so much. McCarthy, is a pro, it, it, McCarthy has proven of stuff, and uh, he knows the Cleveland Browns. So McCarthy is going there. That's what's going to happen. The New York Giants, Matt Rule, perfect fit. Dallas Cowboys is Lincoln Riley. So those are the front runners for all the jobs. I think Lincoln Riley is a damn good football coach. Damn coach. I'll tell you, the, the LSU offensive coordinator, Joe Brady, is a phenom. He's sensational. He's absolutely absurdly ridiculous. He spent time with Sean Payton. So Joe Brady's a hell of a hell of a hell of a name. As, a, uh, as an offensive coordinator, Brent Venables and, J and, J and Aranda from college are other good coaches as well. Um, I'm going to try to think uh, about the other guys in the NFL. Robert Sala, eh. 
I'm, don't Robert Sala and Romans. I don't want any part of those guys. Sala's a good dude, but he could just be Gus Bradley again. He had one great year where, where the 49ers drafted this incredible defense around him, and Sala's done a spectacular job. And I know there's a lot of Niners fans over here. Sala's a spectacular motivator. How is he as a head coach? How is he going to get along with the offense? No. And then Daniel Jones, or excuse me, Greg Roman, hell no. Greg Roman runs the weirdest offense in the world. He will not work anywhere but having a Lamar Jackson. Colin Kaepernick was an exceptional, exceptional quarterback when he had him as well. An exceptional runner. Greg Roman runs the craziest offense in the world. He's an older guy. You don't know about his personality at all. No thank you. No thank you at all. Jason Garrett goes without saying. The Giants, I'm feeling Matt Rule. If it's not Matt Rule, we really have to – it's Matt Rule or bust right now. Robert Sala. Robert Sala is an outstanding, outstanding – he's a great defensive coordinator. I don't know about him as a head football coach. He looks like the part. He looks the part. Huge risk for the New York Giants. I think Robert Sala in Jacksonville, even though it's Gus Bradley territory, that's probably why they won't end up hiring him, but – uh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I don't want McCarthy either. I just don't because he didn't get along with Rodgers. Too much stale Pat vibes. Not dynamic personality. Meek, dry, and boring. Um, so I'm not a fan of McCarthy actually at all. And McCarthy had Aaron Rodgers. No Rex Ryan either. No McCarthy. Thank you. Stale Pat vibes. Chris Senor, thank you so much. I think Ron's going to go to Washington. Um, but, guys, this has been fun. I'm going to take the Niners and the Chiefs. That Bills-Ravens game will be epic, or else I'll take the Chiefs over the Ravens either way. I think Kellen Moore's done a really, really good job. I think he's just really young. I've been a Kellen Moore fan for the longest of long times um, for Kellen Moore, uh, a fan of Kellen Moore. And... Um, Noah, thank you. <laughs> if he goes upstairs, Chris, it's so funny. <laughs> Hello, Yankee King. Of course, you love Urban. You love Urban Meyer, but uh, man, man, what was I going to say? I, I even lost my train of thought. Uh, usually when breaking news goes down or when crazy stuff goes down, but I think Kellen Moore is actually really, really good. I think Kellen Moore is absolutely awesome. Uh, I think he's going to be a really good coach someday. Um, I think Eric Bieniemy again, you don't know. Brian Dable, no thank you. Bieniemy worked under Reed, no idea. Um, the Giants, the Rooney rule. Um, so the Giants are probably going to interview Perry Fuel. They're going to interview Caldwell for the Rooney rule requirements. You're going to see that happen very, very soon. Uh, is, it on, is it on Twitter? I might check it out. Uh, Chris, thank you. I am busy, though, but I really, really appreciate that. Andy Garcia, everybody, thank you guys for coming in, chatting it up. It has been a really fun time here on the live stream. Appreciate everybody. Classic game tonight in Seattle. And really, another, another season comes and goes. It wasn't a great one for the New York Giants, but it sure was an entertaining season. And for, a for the first time in a long time, we have a lot of contenders coming up for the playoffs. And uh, everybody, Raphael, thank you so much. Andy, it would be awesome. So thank you guys for coming in, chatting it up. Take care, everybody. Have a great night.